And it's really interesting um, because as I'm looking out at us, um, we are also young people. I think we forget that this is a continual journey uh, and that some of us are still having some of the conversations we're preparing our young ladies for every day. And it does help to know uh, that there are always folks who have been doing it longer than we have, to be perfectly honest. And it also helps to know that there are folks behind us. So my role is to give you a super quick overview of the STEMinista project itself and then to introduce you uh, to some really, really special ladies. Um, but the first thing I want to do is acknowledge the wind beneath our wings. So if the staff of the Michigan Science Center could kind of raise your hand and maybe make a little noise. You know they're in the back, right? Staff is always sort of in the back and around the edges and with cameras. And if the staff of Detroit Public Television could kind of wave your hand and make a little noise. So it takes a lot, as we mentioned before, for something like this to happen. And I told you I also had additional thank yous. The STEMinista project uh, is built um, around the concept, uh, frankly, haha, -ha, that it takes an army. Um, and so we have lots of partners deliberately. Obviously, Detroit Public Television, but I also want to acknowledge we have uh, three community founding partners, one of it is, which is Detroit Public Television, who does amazing things that the Michigan Science Center cannot do with a camera and a page, so I want to acknowledge them. The second is we understood that we were going to want to incorporate role models in the stories of women who were actually in the work, and we needed a partner to help us do that. And so we partner with Inform, and I see folks from Inform, raise your hand. And we want to attempt to be as rigorous as the careers we are sending our young ladies off into the sunset with. And so we have Wayne State University also on as our research partner to help us ask the right questions and get the right data. In addition to that, we have many, many community partners who work in STEM or who work with young ladies, and you've seen their names flashing around the screens, and I want to acknowledge that they are also part of what we're doing. And the only way that it is possible for us to keep up with uh, tween girls, because they are a lot faster than any of us will ever be, uh, and we really want to be able to support what they're doing. I got a really interesting question uh, yesterday from one of my staff members. It's a question that I get often and am never prepared to answer. It's that question around why a girls program? Are we talking girls science or is it makeup? Are we doing chemistry? So, so why are we specifically doing this? And then are we, are we not including the boys? It is a fair question and it is a question that I get all the time. And for some reason, I'm always looking for the good answer because there are many, many ways that I can answer this. I can, I can start at the end, which is some of what we've heard. I can say, you know, 50% of our workforce is all women. 50% of our workforce is all women. Only 25% of our STEM fields are being occupied by women, which means a of our workforce is opting out of the most important sector that we have. I can start there. Or I can say, we've got a retention rate of just barely 50% of women in the first 10 years of their STEM careers. So we're, we're having this, this massive and stunning turnover. I can talk about how the US Census Bureau says that over 70% of people with STEM degrees are not actually in STEM fields. That's because we're smart. And we can do anything and we have choices. Right? And so in that world of choice, not all of us are choosing STEM. And then when you add to that the number of young ladies who are taking on those STEM degrees in colleges, you realize the pool is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And then I can tell you that one of our colleagues, uh, the Girl Scouts, did an amazing national study and found out that upwards of 70% of middle school and high school girls are actually interested in STEM and STEM careers, and we just can't figure out what happened to them in the interim. Or I can give you my inspirational quote of the month. Uh, the 2015 US News and Raytheon STEM Index shows remarkably little progress toward decreasing gender disparities for interest in STEM. 
Uh, in spite of a range of research projects and education initiatives focused on studying and closing the gaps, certain cultural issues, bias, discrimination, and social exceptions still play a significant role, diverting students from the STEM pipeline, often even before they reach college. We have different versions of inspiration. So those are the kinds of things that get me ex activated and make me think about this. And I could do those statistical things, but I think that today, for this group, I will simply be honest. That this, for me, is personal. I am a STEMinista. I have a doctorate in biomedical engineering. I was good in math and science all through middle school, and no one ever said to me, I should be an engineer or a rocket scientist or anything like that. I love NASA and the movie Martian because I thought I was going to work on Skylab, but I made that up myself because no one told me anything. I graduated with really good grades from eighth grade, and I went to a private Catholic high school, all girls, um, that was designed to send us off into college. And the very first day of that experience, I had a guidance counselor tell me to be more reasonable about my college choices. I graduated from my high school as their valedictorian, went off to a wonderful alma mater, Duke University. I'm only in popular in this state during this month, this month right here. Um, <laughs> And I went to Duke University in the School of Engineering, and it was a whole nother world. Yes, there are not a lot of girls on Science Drive. There are not a lot of faces of color on Science Drive. But I thought people were smiling. I thought people were happy and encouraging. But still, there were moments maybe you're the exception. Or maybe you could be on that journey. But I'm not sure I see people like you having a PhD those stories up because one, I'm still here. Two, I'm really stubborn and that's what I had going for me. But three, I was evidencing the characteristics that we want in these fields and I was evidencing interest in them. And for whatever reason, my name was not being called. And so I understand that this is important. What really resonates with me is the fact that when I talk to middle school girls, their story sounds way too much like mine. And when I talk to folks who are still blazing a path for me, their story sounds way too much like mine. And ever since I was young, I wanted to change the world. And somehow I ended up in this space, and this is the one thing I think I would like to change. I would like to change that particular story, right? Success looks like a young lady with a different story. And I think that that's really important, but more importantly, I think that it is really, really possible. And so I'm acknowledging that we need to call our young lady's name. I'm also acknowledging that they are already interested and already good at this stuff. This is not um, us doing something for someone else. This is us basically saving ourselves. We talked a lot about innovation. Groupthink is the death of innovation. And what we are facing are entire countries who have decided to put their entire country on the STEM track and we can actually do the same thing. First of all, every STEM project needs a multitasker. Get a woman. I think that these are the different kinds of things that we can actually bring to the table. And I do want to acknowledge that to date, all of my CEOs have been men, and they encourage me to be here. My dad is a man, and he encouraged me to be here. My younger brother, who thinks of himself as my older brother, has also encouraged me to be here. So this is a big community effort, hence the STEMinista Project. The STEMinista Project is our wraparound initiative for fourth through eighth grade girls. Why? Because fourth through eighth grade is the hit zone. We know and we have data that this is where the interest begins to drop off. Fourth through eighth grade still represents a time where young ladies are excelling in math and science, and many of them will still say it's their favorite class. So it's a good time to go after them. 
Fourth through eighth grade is when young people start setting the kinds of interests that actually will tell you what their trajectory is for the rest of their lives. In terms of what their career is gonna be, what they're gonna be interested in, fourth through eighth grade is where the Michigan Science Center excels. So this is why we have picked this age uh, in, order to, in order to do this. The program has two major parts. The first is the programs. That's why we have so many partners. We're gonna have different programs. Our first one starts next week, STEM and Easter Saturdays, Overnight Girls Hackathon, Summer STEM Camp. Many of you will be volunteering for them just because you really wish you could sign up as an actual participant. These are gonna be amazing, amazing things. However, not all of the programs inside the STEM and Easter Project are only for girls. We are launching these young ladies into the real world, not to Venus. And so we're also going to be having interesting and stimulating programs for all middle school students. And what we're going to be looking at to see is if calling these young ladies' names helps us to increase the level of participation, the level at which girls will self-identify themselves as STEMinistas and join those programs on their own. So the first component is programs, and it is why I'm already thankful for all the partners that we have, because that's how we'll get that done. The second major component is the STEMinista role model database. One of the things we talked about is we don't necessarily see women in these roles, even though they are out there. But you know what? They work. They're busy. And so what we are trying to do is create a database, something light and accessible, something that has pictures. We are changing the face of STEM, but not to all women. We are simply adding the face to that conversation. Um, and we've got our database and we're doing the program as a pilot now and we were calling all of our friends um, in Detroit and Southeast Michigan because we wanted 100 faces in the database before we opened it up to young girls to be able to sign up and we wanted to be able to do something we can handle. So let's just go for Detroit. Let's just go for 100 people. Let's just see if we can get that done by the beginning of uh, March. I'm excited and a little bit, whoa, to announce that we have over 200 women from five different countries um, in our STEMinista role model uh, database. So clearly, it's a big issue and a big conversation. Um, and to that end, I would actually like to acknowledge all of the STEMinista role models who are in our database today. Can you all please stand? I know you're here because you're RSVP. <laughs> and you're <laughs> Thank you. So there are, my um, head of marketing was famous for telling us, never get on stage without a call to action. Okay, so we got two calls to action, very, very easy. The first is around the role model database. We want to get the folks um, in the role model database. Um, and so if you are a STEMinista, if you discovered that you were a STEMinista today, or if you just really like the name and you think you're just going to get in there, yes, in the database, anyway, sign up. Ten questions, doesn't really take a whole lot of time. So you guys can come on and sign up in the database, and then you got to bring four more, right? So each person, that's right, four more. I, thought, I was thinking 12 more, but I decided to be reasonable. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do four more. So get in the database and bring four more folks with you. And think creatively. If you really wanna be in the database, I can probably figure out how you're connected to STEM in under 90 seconds. So think creatively about getting in there because we know people have choices and they want to do a lot of different things. And so we wanna represent the full breadth of what you can do uh, with STEM. The second thing is this is an open sign-up program. We are the hub and we are helping young ladies get to all of the programs that we are discovering, creating, and building right here in the Science Center and across Southeast Michigan. So tell a young lady between fourth and eighth grade to get involved, to just sign up, get on the newsletter. We'll have different programs and inspirational moments and also tell her she does need to bring 12 friends because that thing about being isolated and not wanting to stand out when you are 12 and 13 years old is very very real um, and so those are the two calls to action 
And like I said, this gets personal and emotional for me, not because it's a problem, but because it is possible. And you are all in the STEM mode, so I'm assuming that you required proof that it was possible. So I brought proof. So I brought proof. Are you ready, proof? Proof, y'all ready, proof? Okay. Um, my name is Gable Bell. I'm a former science docent, and I'm in ninth grade, and I'm your next cardiothoracic surgeon. Hi, my name is Anaya Hanser. I am in seventh grade, and I am your next mechanical engineer. Hi, I'm Noelle Shields. I'm in eighth grade, and I'm your next pediatric nutritionist. Hi, my name is Emily Fernandez. I'm in seventh grade, and I'm your next marine biologist. Hi, I'm Giselle Motley. I'm in eighth grade, and I'm your next mechanical engineer. Hi, I'm Christine Collins. I'm in the seventh grade, and I'm your next pediatrician. Hi, my name is Micaiah Brown. I'm in the seventh grade, and I'm your next forensic scientist. Hi, my name is Nia Mitchell. I'm in seventh grade, and I'm your next aerospace engineer. Hi, my name is Amari Garrett. I'm in the seventh grade, and I'm your next pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you again to our amazing sponsors, ITC, who helped us make Thank you again to all of my proof warriors, all of my current STEMinistas who are really going to help us make a difference. And they have agreed uh, to give short tours of their favorite parts of the Science Center. These are our junior docents. They are better at explaining what we do than we are, and they have helped us talk about it better. So they're willing to do that as well. Again, please come past our website. Please say hello to our docents and to our staff and become a part of the Steminista Project. Thank you. Have a good morning. Thank you.